Hey guys, in this video I will show you a relatively underrated technique in my opinion of using Google Maps underlay in order to produce a context drawing with your proposal in it, as opposed to modeling site information inside either SketchUp or Revit. And in some ways this is a redundant process because most of that information these days for a lot of places exists inside of 3D Google Maps. I'll start this drawing with outlining the main edges of the building because I've actually skipped a bit where I was perspective matching Morfolio Trace 3 point perspective assist with a Google image map but I've done that just to make the process a bit quicker and I use the marker brush inside the Morfolio Trace app. Now the buildings you can see here are typical late 19th century London terraces that are quite distinct and in order to save time I don't really want to draw every single bit, every single detail, and instead I'll focus on the more relevant bits and make the drawing feel sketchy. Now the concept of this drawing is to simulate the situation whereby, you know, if we wanted to submit this to the city, to the council, or planning approval for example, we would want to show the kind of general feel and the context of the buildings and where there are strict planning rules, as probably is the case in this example of typical London suburb, then we should definitely show how the building would sit with the surrounding massing of the existing buildings. I will then proceed with the trees. Usually when I draw trees, I'll start with a rough outline using wiggly lines, as you can see here. In urban setting like this, the shrubs and the grass usually follow the pathways and also division lines between the buildings, so between the neighboring properties. I'll also add in this case the kind of more interesting features like this underpass and then the shape of the path as well. Now we don't have to focus specifically on each tree and make them super super accurate. Again, as with the buildings, the general idea is to convey the sense of massing and the sense of uh, place. Time to add the windows and it's a balancing act. Again, the closer the windows are to the closest part of the drawing, the more detail I'll add and the further away they are, the less detail they will receive. So you might be wondering why I still haven't shown the main proposal and the reason is quite simple is because in this particular case we really want to sell our proposal fitting in the context so we should show the surrounds in their full glory so it does make sense to focus on the surroundings and show them an appropriate amount of detail and once we have the surroundings shown we can then match the level of detail on our main proposal as well. The other reason why I usually start with the context in these sort of situations is because if I were to start with the main building I would use a lot of energy and I would probably go into too much detail and having a bigger scale drawing at less level of detail just helps me to control that urge to um, overdo and overbake the drawing from the beginning. So now that we have the context set up, it's time to move on to the main event and I'll start with drawing the path for the building and then locate the height using the adjacent buildings. The perspective I've set up previously helps me with this task. Um, I will be using different layer for the base of this drawing in a kind of rough way and then the final outlines will follow on a new layer. Once the building is drawn, I can erase the excess lines on different layers. And now just to finish the drawing, I can draw the roofscape. With the roofscape, you can see that Google Maps are a bit distorted, so I will be using the knowledge I sort of have on these terrace houses. They're quite typical in UK. I will be using that knowledge to just finish and fill the gaps uh, in the drawing. Again, this is not in a super huge detail, just showing some chimneys and uh, the general kind of features that you would find on the roofscape, adding these bolts for interest. and then start to outlining in white for that artistic effect. It just helps to draw attention to the design itself and less to the surroundings.
I also like to, for three dimensionality, to add, you know, an outline highlight to the trees. And then in a similar fashion, add shadow to the building. Start with the main proposal in this case, and then the immediate surroundings as well. And this is a way to make the building pop. The final touches, the reflections on canal. And to highlight the extent of the property, I'm adding the texture for the paving in front of the building. So that's a wrap guys, let me know in the comments below what you thought about this technique, if that's something that interests you and you might potentially be using this approach. By the way, I've released content weekly, so if you haven't subscribed, then consider doing so because I aim to help architects and interior designers to improve their drawing skills in order to draw with more confidence and having more fun doing so. Also, if you have any recommendations about the content, the types of tutorials that you would like to see in the future, then please let me know in the comments below. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.